So, uh, th this is uh, Bill Campbell, Professor Bill Campbell at the University of New Mexico's uh, Physics and Astronomy Department. I'm only sorry that you've missed the first few minutes of this conversation, which has been fascinating, but we'll try to bring you up to date. Uh, Bill, you've been working as closely with the orbiting uh, Hubble telescope as any astronomer in New Mexico. Is that is that right? That's fair to say. Um, what's the problem with the Hubble, and what are they doing to correct it? The major problem with the Hubble is the misfiguring of the central mirror, of the main mirror of the telescope. Uh, it was ground out and polished to an incorrect shape, mm -hmm. and that problem has made the images that come out from Hubble not the point-like sharp images that we were expecting, but in fact a point with a considerable halo or blur around it. Right. And that's made it very difficult to do good science. It's kind of like having a, uh, a, what is that, a medical term when you have something wrong with your eye and you see a halo around the objects that Certainly. you're seeing. Yeah. So you are still getting uh, data from it, as you've just told me. Yes. How is it that you can get data from this damaged telescope? Well, we get images. These images uh -huh. are blurred. They are um, not sharp and processing them to get real information out of them is a very difficult and time-consuming task. Nevertheless, the telescope is you know, 2.4 meters big. It can collect a lot of light, and we can get pictures out of it. The instruments that measure the light themselves, like our camera, the wide-field right. planetary camera, are working reasonably well. So it's not as though America has just gone on a nationwide drunk and spent all this money and put this telescope up in the air and, and now all we're getting back is fuzzy pictures. We actually are getting something from it. Yes, indeed. And yet, and yet you're angry about it, as you have told me. Why, why is that? I'm angry because it could have been done differently with not a whole lot of trouble. Um, one can't go back to the early 1980s and remove mm -hmm. the, the political expediency that NASA was feeling at the time from the federal government and changed the way they reacted to having problems. But the reality was that um, contractors who built this mirror ignored three tests that told them tell us that the mirror was bad and accepted the one test that told them it was okay. Mm -hmm. And hence we have this warped mirror. And so in the future, I mean, Americans like to support science. Um, We've seen uh, just recently in Iraq whether or not, uh, I mean, everybody, I think every American is happy that given the fact that we did what we did there, that we had the science to back up our people who were there. Um, how, but people want to support the large projects in astronomy sim similarly, but I wonder what your feeling is about future large projects with NASA. Well, there are two halves to that question. One is whether we should have them done by NASA, and the other is whether we should support these large projects. Uh -huh. Hubble was an attempt to be all things to all astronomers. It cost us $2 billion. Voyager is an example, on the other hand, of something that cost about $100 million and was eminently successful in a very limited area, but uh -huh. very successful. $100 million is small change, Compared relatively. To well, what is your particular area of expertise? What I do is study star formation. Very which, young stars and how they make it there, how they get born. Which we've called elsewhere the solar nursery yes. concept, right? Yes. What, why is that different? Or how is that different from the usual things that astronomers have studied at major uh, observatories like the Wilson in California? The Mount Wilson Observatory. Um, typically, the more glamorous areas of astronomy have been involved in extragalactic, that is out of, outside of our own Milky Way, the rest of the universe other than the Milky Way. Uh -huh. And we have studied quasars. Um, we meaning you astronomers, or astronomers? As, a, as a whole uh -huh. have studied quasars. It's a very exciting area. The nature of the expansion of the universe, the fate of the universe, all of these things, um, if you'll pardon the expression, are more sexy. That yeah. to funding agencies and uh, for many astronomers. I would find it sexier if I understood what a quasar really is. What, can you define that briefly? What I, is a quasar? I think our best understanding right now is that a quasar is the, the light produced by material falling into a very, very massive black hole at the center of a very young galaxy. Uh -huh. So it's material falling into a black hole at the center of a very young galaxy. Yes. Why is that important? Why is that important? Tells us how galaxies form. Uh 
Uh -huh. uh, it tells us about the nature of very early material in the universe. These are very young galaxies. When we look far away at quasars, we're looking back in time. Don't old galaxies have quasars? No. Just That's the galaxies. mystery. So the black holes, meaning a, tr a, a field of tremendous gravitation that sucks things into yes. it in the center of young galaxies, is the Milky Way a young galaxy? The Milky Way is not a young galaxy. We are seeing ourselves in the current day. We are about 15 billion years old. And yes, the Milky Way probably does have a black hole at the center. Even though it's not a young? Even though it's not a young galaxy. But it doesn't have the, the massive black hole that quasars are believed to have. And it doesn't have as much material falling in as quasars are believed to have, not by a long shot. If we had more time, I would be real interested in following this out further. Um, but this is not, the, you have left this as a field of interest and you are studying as opposed to the birth of galaxies, you're talking about the birth of suns and planets. Individual stars right. and the planets around them. Why is that of interest here? It's of interest partially because we only know one solar system, one star with planets around it, and that's this one, the one we're in. We have no observational evidence, no co incontrovertible observational evidence of planets around any other star. So are we rare or are we common? We need to find stars in the process of forming to see if they have the material left around them that will eventually coalesce into planets. Wait a minute. I, I feel like we should stop the presses here. I mean, are you saying that Captain Picard and all these people on Star Trek are visiting planets that we don't even know if there are other planets Correct. outside? Correct. This is the only solar system that all our astro astronomical uh, machines cannot tell us whether or not there is a single other star system in, at which, in which there are planets. Correct. I see. So you are going to tell us. <laughs> what I and, and, mm -hmm. and lots of my collaborators would like to do is to find the process happening in enough places mm -hmm. so we can look at a very early solar system, see the material around it coalescing bit by bit, and eventually see what we might call Jupiter-sized planets in formation around other stars. I That's see. right on the edge of what Hubble should be able to do. Okay. Bill, you, you grew up in the south, yeah. right? And uh, uh, this is, we, we have very little time left here, but are you, as I understand, you studied with the children of Werner von Braun? Well, not literally in my classroom, but certainly in the same school system. I grew up in Huntsville, Alabama with, with uh, NASA just down the street. My daddy worked for NASA. Well, I want to thank you, Bill Campbell, a physics professor, a physics and astronomy professor at the University of New Mexico, for being with us here this, this evening to talk about the birth of stars and the problems with the Hubble telescope.